Hi. I didn't see you there. I'm Michael George Busher. Some say the third, some say junior. Haven't quite figured that out yet. I'm here today to talk to you about emergency medicine. VCU, emergency medicine. Today we're going to take a walk, a walk in the life of Michael Busher. Along the way, we're going to meet some friends. Friends of mine, colleagues, if you will. <laughs> I am the chief, after all. And we'll interview these people and see their stories. Come on with me. Let's dance. Amanda Bonhurst, a Yank from Pennsylvania. Amanda went to MUSC Medical School, where she learned to embrace the social activities of the South, like mud bogging, and the recommended daily intake of beer. Tenacious, smart, and never one to be inhibited. A devoted co-resident and always willing to share, she offered to let Sparky become her roommate for the last year of residency. Hi, Sparks. Amanda. What? That stupid cat of yours peed all over my pillow last night. Oh, time. Charles wouldn't do anything like that. that. Oh. <laughs> so, come tell me about your day. Man, these stupid off-service interns and these, these attendings, they don't know what they're doing. Like, we had a, a guy come in, blood trauma, I was all up in there, that stupid anesthesia resident got up in my face, I was like, get out, just get out. And I have my ultrasound ready, and I cut his throat, and I stuck the chest tube in, and it was all done. I don't know why they just don't let me do it all the time. Well, Sparks, do what I do. Just have a case of beer. How many do you already have? A case, man. Okay. In a few short weeks, Amanda will be moving to the Bronx for a critical care. Just the pulse is intact. Is somebody getting the ultrasound machine? Are we ready for chest x-ray? All right, guys, who wants head? Michael George Busher. Me. Considered most to be tall, dark, credible blue eyes from Connecticut, I've always been an integral part of our residency program over the past three years. As an intern and a second-year resident, I always looked up to us, my senior residents, Always modeled in the footsteps of my role model, Mike Singleton, when it came to dating. So, Busher, I've seen you admiring my skills over the last few years, and let me tell you, you just got to go out and do it. You know, there are plenty of available females in this hospital for you to date. Trust me, I know from experience. There are medics, been there, done that nurses, secretary, nurses from other units. Please, you gotta spread the love around. What you really gotta do is just get on the horse, ask her out, and go for it, man. You got nothing to lose. Hey, uh, Heather, how you doing? Mike here, yeah. Just, uh, just wondering what you got going on. Maybe, uh, Friday night, you know, thought you maybe want to go out. So, yeah, just let me know what's up. Hey, doucher. Uh, yeah, what? What are What's you up? doing? Oh, no, uh, nothing. I was just, you know, just practicing. Uh, what are you practicing? Well, you know, I thought maybe I'd ask uh, Heather out on a little date. You're going to ask out Heather? Oh, my God, she's my favorite RN. So you're going to do it like that? Yeah, I mean, I uh, thought I'd be cool about it. No, I do not think that that is a good idea. you got to work on your game. Try it again. All right, all right. <laughs> Heather, what's up? Mike here. Doing anything uh, this weekend? Thought maybe we could go get a beer or, you know, some, some, maybe, maybe a movie, something like that. All right. That's good. That's good. Is That'll that work. Mean? Yeah, maybe. Right. I don't know. All right, cool. All right, Heather. Not. I'll see you there. Yeah. Nice work. I like yeah. it. Give a little ta-chow. All right, all right. All right, Heather. I'll see you there. Yeah. Oh, that's so it. Hey, uh, hey, hey. Do you need something? Uh, um, no, I'm good. I'm good. Alright, I'm really busy. Yeah, uh, sure. 
Well, actually, actually uh, Heather, right? No, uh, I'm, I'm Mike. Yeah. One of the doctors here. Yeah. Do you need something? I was just, yeah, I was just wondering if you, what are you doing this weekend? Um, probably working. Alright, okay, well, Alright, have a good job. Hey, uh, Heather, I need a Mac 4, a uh, uh, 802, some suction, a uh, 10cc syringe, and uh, your phone number for this weekend, okay? Stat. Stat, Heather. No. <laughs> Spite. Spending long hours at the hospital, participating in CPC competition, running 10Ks, going to national conferences. I still found time for a social life. To all residents. Cover my shift? Question mark, question mark. Hey guys, my girlfriend is here. She is real. I promise. Can you cover my shift? It's very important. Busher. The chief. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this is gonna work. Hey, Shannon. Busher! What are you doing? Let me read this. I want someone to cover my shift. It's very important. Busher. We she doesn't you, come here all the time. I told you about this last week, and the week before, and the week before. You've got but this to... party's really important. She's turning 35. She's turning 35? Okay. You can't. You're supposed to be the chief resident. I put you that in the email. You can't be going to a party every the single chief, right weekend. There. Shannon, you'll be it's fine. Okay. I'll just give you 10 extra shifts for this one. We'll give it to the interns. Okay, good. Good plan, good plan. Aline Chu from Orange County, California. Aline grew up rubbing with elbows with all the stars. Although Richmond was a startling change of pace, Aline adapted well to her new environment, carefully documenting all of the local delicacies and becoming very popular with the patients of MCV and even received correspondence from a patient in an orange jumpsuit thanking her for her care and expressing admiration. Dear beautiful Eileen Chu, I'm sure you receive letters like this all the time. We've never met, but I saw you from afar. I can see that you're an exceptional woman. To carry yourself in such an elegant manner and exude sexuality. I want you to know that you are the picture of femininity. I have been so lonely lately and seeing a woman as attractive as you intoxicates me. I dream of you and me getting together. I want to crawl all over you like a, a snake. Let's get married in the ocean. Yours truly, R.C. Dr. Chu, I love you. Never one to be discouraged, Eileen is always optimistic about meeting new Hey Eileen. Hey Johanna. What are you doing? Nothing. Just getting some sign out sheets. Oh, can I have one too? Oh, thanks. Here you go. Hey, did you sign up for Match.com? Yeah, did. I just did. We should go check out our profiles. Let's, yeah, let's look at let's our see if we have any matches. All right, here we go. Bachelor number one. Ooh. What do you think about him? Let's keep moving. Bachelor number two. Oh. Well, 
What do you I think? think maybe. Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Let's see here, number three. Oh. He looks All kind right. of This is not my day today. Yeah, he looks a little military. How about the last one they said? Oh, I think that's your winner. What do you think? I don't know. He looks a little small. Eileen, you don't seem too happy with your matches. I know. This keeps happening. I mean, what about you? What have you been doing? Maybe you should have gone on urologymatch.com. Next time, Eileen, this is where you need to go. So it's pretty, pretty. Lisa Dodd. Lisa was born and raised in the Northern Neck, where she developed her laid-back personality in particular vernacular that endeared her to her colleagues here at MCB. Hey, Dr. Kurz! Dr. Kurz, I have a patient to tell you about. All right, Lisa, tell me about your I patient. I totally, totally think um, that they are... Are you, are you sunburned? Overdosing. Are you They're sunburned? Overdosing. They're no, this is my natural color, but they're overdosing. They're what? Overdosing. Oh, they got overdose. Overdosing. Yeah, overdosing. Anyway, <laughs> so this patient comes in. He's a 45-year-old male. Um, no medical history, but he works in the field. He's been salivating, lacrimating, defecating, urinating, GI upsetting, vomiting, gagging. Um, what you else? Mean? Bradycardin. He's been. Are you speaking Korean. English right now? Yes. And okay, let's, let's try again. Bronchospasm. He's doing all that. Oh, you mean bronchospasming? Whatever. Bronchospasm. Yeah. Well, did you get an EKG? Um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, that's one that I just put up. Did you get a Did you get a urine? The window to the soul. He was urinating. Yeah. Oh, he was urinating. Urinating. All right, Lisa. Let, let's go take a look at the patient. Let's see what I think. Okay, we gotta do it quick because I gotta see my honey boo boo. You brought all your pets to work. What? What's their names? They're cute. Lulu, Lola, Lila. Lila. <laughs> oh, and this one sings. <laughs> all right, let's go see the patient. <laughs> A Virginia girl through and through, Lisa went to college at UVA and worked as a medic at MCV before going to medical school in Blacksburg at VCOM. Although she's made her way out of Virginia several times throughout residency, her heart lies with her family and her dog. Hey, Eileen, Eileen. So hey, guess Lisa. What? I think that we what? should go to the Colonial Beach Drag Racing Strip. What? It'd be so much that? fun. It's like drag racing. I've never heard of that. Racing. It's really awesome. Is that what y'all do? They got men there. They got dogs. It's going to be so much fun. We don't have that in California. Why don't we go shopping instead? Um, for men? For clothes. Okay. Or we can go out and eat. All right, awesome. We can take pictures of it and put it on Facebook. Okay, <laughs> sounds like a plan. Plan! <laughs> Lauren Gregg, the ultimate slacker. Before gracing the MCV ER residency program, Lauren Gregg just hadn't done a whole lot. In undergrad, she was captain of the championship team of the first ever NCAA Women's Soccer National Champions and was selected for the first ever Women's Olympic Festival team. After that, she went to some no-name school, Harvard, for her master's degree. But that just wasn't enough for this slouch. As head coach at UVA, she was the first woman coach to take her team to the NCAA Final Four and was named NCAA Coach of the Year. She was the first woman to serve as an assistant coach for any U.S. soccer's national teams. Finally deciding to get off her ass, she assisted the U.S. women's national team and winning the 1991 Women's World Cup in China, the 1996 Olympic Games, and the historic 1999 Women's World Cup. All in a day's work. With her copious amounts of free time, Lauren published a highly regarded book, 
the champion within. Mike Busher reads a copy every morning. Nowadays, Lauren just spends most of her time driving around in a car as she commutes from the Charlottesville, or sometimes sitting around for roadside assistance. It's okay, it's okay. Um, well, I'm spending the night at Johanna's house. So what can we do? Well, actually, maybe, hold on. Let me see. Let's see if we can try to fix it. And then if we can't, let's call Joe. Joe Mason, because he's a really good let's mechanic. Let's call Joe Mason. He's a redneck. You know let's he can that. fix cars. Let's chest to it, I'll give you two extra purposes for that. Wow. <laughs> You're always prepared, I guess. What can I say? Yes. But my hearts. knee. Joe Mason. Shit-kicking Joe Mason got his redneck ways growing up in Tazewell County, Virginia. Of course, we don't know where Tazewell County, Virginia is. Apparently straddling the border between Virginia and West Virginia which makes so much sense. However, he grew up to realize there was more to life than just marrying one of his cousins. And off he came to the big city of Richmond to attend MCV Medical School. The Richmond population is a unique one, and Joe's backward roots didn't always result in a whole lot of respect Hi, I'm Dr. Mason. What brings you into the emergency department today? What kind of shoes are you wearing? You, you, you pervert! Get out of here! I don't know what that was about. It was the ability to take a lot of shit that got him elected to be chief resident. He's been steadfast and reliable. Shannon, this here's Joe Mason. Well, I was out shooting the paintball, and I think I caught a cold. I, I know I'm on my vacation, but I just wanted to call in sick. Ugh. Not feeling too good. Not feeling too good. Oh, 
Oh, I think my lungs dropping. Oh god. <coughs> Busher, Mason, you got the results back. I'm afraid you've got crap. Oh, no. Chief resident acquired pneumonia. <coughs> Sorry. Don't sugarcoat it, Joe. What are our chances? It's not looking good. Is there anything I can get you guys? Oh god. Turkey sandwich. Let me get a nurse. I'll be right Ginger. back. Joe. <coughs> Mike. <coughs> How'd this happen? <coughs> <laughs> oh, oh god. <coughs> Maybe it was when I smoothed the night over. That was great. That was <coughs> great. <coughs> Wild. Delightful. Delightful. Alright, you guys break it up in here, okay? <laughs> That's enough of that. Can I get a pillow? Where are antibiotics? Pillow. I'm working on the turkey <laughs> sandwich. <coughs> Alex Otto. Alex coupled matched with her now husband Tim and got married at the beginning of her second year. She enjoyed planning her wedding during intern year. Alex, what are you doing in here? We're getting killed out there and you're not seeing any patients. What are you talking about? It's not that busy. What are you doing in here? What could be so important that you have one patient? We're just interns. Well, they're going to fire us. Johanna, my wedding is coming up, and I really have to work on picking the perfect dress. What do you think of this one? Or maybe this one. Oh, that's really cute. Oh, that red light is blinking. What does that mean? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. No. Let's keep on looking at wedding dresses. What's the next one? Mm, I don't know about that one. Mm. What about this one? Nah. Oh, oh, try that. That's I think, perfect. I think that's the one. I think, I think that's, that's the one. one. During Alex's couples match, Tim matched at UVA, and she, of course, matched here at MCV. She has been commuting from Charlottesville, but unfortunately has had a few mishaps along the way. So late for work. Oh my gosh. Where's my keys? Damn it, I must have left him in the house. Oh no! The door is locked! The door is locked! I don't have my cell phone or my keys. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to break in. I'll use this brick to smash the door handle. Alex enjoys her time at work, especially when she gets to work with Dr. Hogan and listen to all his puns. Hey Alex, Dr. Hogan here. I just wanted to uh, wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. And You know, I went back through new innovations, new innovations and went through our, um, all of those patients that you and I had together. You know, I remember the, the very first trauma you had. Remember that deli owner who backed into the meat slicer and got a little behind in his work? I, I certainly do. And your second trauma patient was that, that female captain on the ship who backed into the propeller. Disaster. And then I'm trying to remember, I think your third trauma patient was that, that motorcyclist who had came into the trauma bay and ended up being pregnant because she was off her cycle. Ah, uh, those are certainly very good times. And then there was your first mercury patient. Remember that breastfeeding mom who had the elevated lactate and couldn't quite figure out why and had to get her to the unit? And who could forget all the psychiatric folks that we admitted together? That, that orange juice maker from Florida who just couldn't seem to concentrate 
or the alcoholic lawyer who couldn't pass the bar, and that poor, that poor garbage, the dump truck driver who, or the garbage truck driver who, uh, who was down in the dumps that we ended up admitting. And at last, there was that ob gyne pregnant nun that you and I admitted together. It turns out she'd gotten into a bad habit. All terrible things. The last patient we had together was that poor farmer who came in with syphilis. Apparently, he'd been hanging out with too many hoes. And last but not least, who could forget that first surge aunt patient, the English teacher with, with colon cancer resection that ended up having to learn how to use semicolons all over again. Those are all patients that I remember quite well staffing with you, and I know that based on how you, how you treated them and, and your kind, respectful manner, you're going to make an excellent doctor, and I can only wish you the best of luck in your future career. Thank you. Alex enjoys outdoor activities, especially those where there is a chance for hypothermia or heat stroke. Scott Spox, made in the East, raised in the West, Sparky has successfully adopted the true American way of gun-toting, tobacco-chewing, pistol-whipping, and ATV riding. Needless to say, he joined the military. In the military, he developed the sunny disposition that we have all come to love. As an intern, Sparky was a pioneer in putting recent journal article evidence into clinical practice. Oh, what? Come on! Unbelievable. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Nurse? Yeah, this is Dr. Sparks. Uh, do not uh, give those patients coumadin. No, 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 I don't care what those stupid ortho attendees and residents say. They're morons. The latest clinical evidence suggests Coumadin should not be given. So, cancel the orders immediately. What? Uh, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. These are power orders, okay? Not power suggestions. I mean, clearly, we have the evidence, right? Exactly. He is especially sensitive when it comes to treating their pain. He is the first resident to obtain the very difficult RDCS certification. In order to do this, Dr. Sparks had to pass a national test on ultrasound physics and complete over 500 cardiac echoes. Uh, hi ma'am, I'm Dr. Sparks, Army Ranger, uh, emergency doctor, ultrasound guru. Um, it says here you're here for suicidal ideation. Yes, doctor. Let me have you lay down there. I've modified this intracavitary probe to uh, analyze your soul. Please. Um, but doctor, I'm here because I, I'm, I'm, I'm scared I might hurt myself. I understand. This will help us get to the root of the problem. Um, don't you want to ask me any questions? No. Got all the information I need right here. Okay. Chris Thong, healer, patriot, hang glide instructor. Like his founding fathers before him, Virginia born Chris Thong is passionate about a multitude of issues. After growing up in the revolutionary town of Yorktown, Virginia, Chris studied at Thomas Jefferson's academic village at UVA, both of which contributed to his early love of politics. Erudite and pensive, Chris was always one of the more outspoken members of his residency class, and his excellent communication skills were reflective in his patient care. Hey, Chris, what's up? Yeah, well, you know... I was just listening to this lady, and I just have no idea what she's saying. Do you mind, well, you know, going in and looking at it? Sure. Ya chuchu. Ya ese muchachito que llevo aquí no hay, no hay muchachito, no necesita nada, aquí no hay ningún niño, ¿ya? ¿Qué? Pues que todo fue un invento mío, que no estoy embarazada, ¿ya? ¿Cómo? Pues que alcances. Chris, nevertheless, 
remains committed to forming a more perfect health care system. He is unwaveringly thorough in his patient workups. Hey everyone, Joe Mason here, giving out the annual Resident Graduation Awards. And I'm very honored to give this next award. Uh, this one goes out to someone who ordered more tests on any patient. And because of that, get most patients signed out AMA. Congratulations, Chris Baum. We've had some really great cases in Richmond, a lot of, a lot of the pulmonary emboli and a lot of MIs here are chest pains anyways. Most of them did not end up being a chest pain. But this is... And Woo! that's enough. That's as long as his sign out there. He's on all day, if you know what I'm saying. Chris realized he had a lot of love for the ultrasound. He shared this with some of his co-residents. I'm the one doing the ultrasound fellowship. Chris Tom, I don't care. I already completed my RDNS. I'm way better than you. Give me the ultrasound. Give me the ultrasound. How's your leg doing? What? What's wrong with my leg? Which, I don't know. Which what thing? I need to put a chest tube in and I need to do an ultrasound right now. Sparks. I have to do a thoracotomy. I have to do a crank. I have to do a crank. I need it. I'm the one doing the ultrasound fellowship. Chris Tom, I don't care. I already completed my RDNS. I'm way better than you. Give me the ultrasound. Give me the ultrasound. How's your leg doing? What? What's wrong with my leg? Which, I don't know. Which what thing? I need to put a chest tube in and I need to do an ultrasound right now. Sparks. I have to do a thoracotomy. I have to do a crank. I have to do a crank. I need it. Shannon Walsh. Over the course of a storied career, Shannon Walsh has perfected the art of not sleeping. Making good use of this vital skill, Shannon excelled in her OBGYN residency. All right, I'm Dr. Shannon Walsh, Chief Resident, and today we're going to be going over the basic pelvic exam because we all know how important those lady parts are. Okay, and thank you to our um, patient here today. And, oh, oh God, just, just a second. You're not doing that, right? Okay. It's very interesting. All right. Here's your basic speculum. You go ahead and insert Whoa. like this. <laughs> like this. Can everyone get a good look? I, I would use the oh, log. Oh my god, what is that? I would use the log as speculum. Yeah, use a bigger one. All right. All right. Whoa. Okay. I think we have some looks something like coming out here. Something's coming out here. Oh, that smells lovely. <laughs> Positive oh. whiff oh, test. Oh. You gotta look for it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> Just what is this? Typical VCU patient. <laughs> Lisa was a girl. And of course, had lots of children. What? Are you kidding me? You're calling in sick again? Oh my gosh. Could it give me indigestion? Okay, fine, I'll work something out, I'll work something out. Hey, hey Shannon. Hey Joe, what's up? I'm just trying to work out the schedule here. Joe Mason here. Tazewell County. I always had a question. I was been scratching my brain trying to figure out. How is it that you don't like the boy parts, but you're always uh you're always pregnant? natural mother, Shannon was a perfect fit as chief resident this year. <laughs> yes! That's right! I am a star! I've made it as chief! You got it too? Chief Walsh! <laughs> yeah! Oh. oh, I'm having a contraction. Oh, no, I'm good. Always true to the family. She will be staying in Richmond with her work husband, Joe Mason, to join some of MCV's finest alumni at Chippingham Hospital. Hey guys. Hey Joe. Hey Shannon. Hey, hey Marie. How are you guys liking your first day at Chippingham? Good. How's the community living? Yeah. 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 They have excellent tongues in the gift shop here. Much better selection. You're about to pop now, aren't you? I don't feel so good. <clears throat> I don't feel so good. Um, this feels familiar. Wait, I have kids. 
What? What are you doing? What Joe, what are you doing? You're not delivering my baby because you can't look at my girl parts because you have boy parts. Marie! Marie, you have to help me! You have to help me! I can't believe we hired you guys. <laughs> okay. Here you go, Shannon. Baby number four. Thanks, Marie. What a great first day at Chip and Ham. I think we'll name him Chip. Baby Chip Johnston Willis Walsh. What a great name. Johanna Wilde. Girls don't get much wilder than Johanna Wilde. She grew up in Louisiana and is full of southern sass. Hey, Laura. Hey, Johanna. Hey, I just need 13's chart. Just need the vital signs. Where are the vital signs? They're not on there? There's never any vital signs. Why are there never any vital signs on the chart? And Louisiana chunk. Hey, Johanna. Line one, urology. Hey, urology, it's Johanna. Can I get a consult? She graduated from Louisiana State University, Go Tigers Medical School, then left her home state for the first time to come to Richmond, Virginia for residency. Happy Mardi Gras! Arlene, aren't you excited about Mardi Gras? What's, what's Mardi Gras? You don't know about Mardi Gras? What do I do with this? And this? You don't know what to do with beads or Mardi Gras? No. They don't have Mardi Gras in California? No. Do they have Mardi Gras in Richmond? I don't think so. <gasps> you mean there's no Mardi Gras in Richmond? No. Amanda, do you know about Mardi Gras? Oh, Johanna. Please tell me you know about Mardi Gras. We don't. Celebrate Mardi Gras here. What do you mean nobody <laughs> celebrates Mardi Gras? Where's the king king? I can't believe this place. I'm leaving. Oh, I don't know. No Mardi Gras. Where's my cat? Johanna has made lots hey, of Alex. friends here in oh, Richmond. Hi, How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> Did you take a picture <laughs> of your food? <laughs> hey, guys. Hi. Hey, Joe. Uh -oh. So what have you guys been up to? Well, Not I mean, much. posted some pictures on Facebook of food. Posted some cakes. Oh my god, I can't wait to cook. Oh my god, what happened to your skin? Hey. It got burned. Girl, your your skin's so burned. It's so burned. So burned. This is my natural Lisa. color. It looks like you got burned. I mean, mud bogging. Oh, Was that from when you were doing volleyball in the northern neck? Yeah. Ooh, I love volleyball. Y'all know. Me too. I'm tall and I can't. They don't play it very school. often in California, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and with that concludes a night with the 2013 graduating class of MCV Emergency Medicine Residency Program. And if Dr. Evans hasn't drinking all the booze. I wish all a good night. Congratulations, class. Hi, y'all. I'm going to miss all of you. I think you're all great. It's been a great time, great fun. I'm going to just give me one word only. You one ready? Word. I'm ready. Amanda Barnhorse. Nails. Mike Busher. Ring. Eileen Chu. California. Lisa Dodd. Country. Lauren Gregg. Nice. Joe Mason. Funny. Scotty Sparks. Weird. <laughs> Chris Thong. Tom? Shannon Walsh. Grumpy. <laughs> Johanna Wild. Urology? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Amanda Barnhorst. Stethoscope. Okay. Mike Busher. Smile. Eileen Chu. The third Asian. Lisa Dodd. Dr. Dodd. <laughs> Lauren Gregg. How about a Big Mac? <laughs> Joe Mason. <laughs> Have you heard of Pneumavax? Um, Scott Sparks. Slow down. Chris Thom. I just like him. Shannon Walsh. <laughs> Birth control? <laughs> Johanna Wild. Tall men. Okay, thanks. You're an ER doc. You can't be a Republican.
Amanda Barnhorst. Cool. I don't Mike, know what else to say. Mike, cool. Mike Busher. Doucher. Eileen Chu. Easy up, sister. Easy up. Lisa Dodd. Lisa Dodd, friend. Lauren Gregg. Lauren Gregg, sweet. Joe Mason. Yeah, good riddance, Joe. <laughs> Have fun on the way out. Don't, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. That's all I gotta say about that. Alex Otto. Cheeseburger. Eat one. I'm just kidding. That's so bad. Scott Sparks. William Shatner. Chris Thom. Creepster. <laughs> Shannon Walsh. Mama. Johanna Wild. Slow, but sweet. <laughs> just like the state she's from. <laughs> Right. Gotti and Scotty, dear sweet Jesus, be nice to the residents up there. <laughs> and Amanda, don't let Scott Sparks bunk in with you. <laughs> Johanna. So, Johanna, she's feisty. She'll kick your ass if you try and take her ET tube from her. Amanda. Amanda, man, you know, she, she's got a huge heart. She will uh, let anybody stay with her. Sometimes her and... Her cats, they don't, the her visitors and the cats, they don't always get along. Busher. He needs to stop being like Gonzalez and leaving his lab coat everywhere. Eileen. Eileen, we're really glad she finally actually found her voice and she can um, actually tell somebody to shove it. Lisa Dodd. Lisa, she was one of my favorites from the beginning. Of course, she and I were paramedics here when uh, she, we were both still paramedics, so I can't say much. I love her. Lauren. Lauren, Greg, we're all happy we don't have to worry about her and her crutches anymore. Mason. Joe, he's quiet, but at least he understands the nurse's hand signals when they need assistance. Alex. Alex, we're happy she is no longer jaundiced. And um, we're a little bit upset with her, though, because we were like, Otto, no hook. Who is she? Sparks. Sparky. Some of us, we hated him in the beginning. That's why he was called Sparky. Now we've kind of come to love him, and a few of us, myself, will miss him. Chris Thong. Him, yeah, we're never sure quite what he's up to because when he comes in, his hair is always a mess. Shannon. Yeah, Shannon, love you, girl. You are, uh, we're wondering, are you looking for a basketball team, hockey team, football team? How many kids you gonna have, girl? Stromberg. Oh, Paul is amazing, as are all toxicology fellows. Okay, tell us a little bit about Paul. Well, Paul likes to have his early morning Diet Cokes. Now this is about four Diet Cokes. So Diet Cokes one through four are before he gets to the poison center. Then he gets to the poison center around nine o'clock in the morning and then he has his mid-morning Diet Cokes. This is usually about Diet Coke five through eight. But in between Diet Cokes one through four and five through eight, he likes to mix it up a little bit, and he likes to have a chocolate chip cookie. But what he especially loves to do is eat that chocolate chip cookie right in front of me, knowing full well that I'm on Weight Watchers. But you know, Paul, you've been a good fellow. You've really taught me a lot, so much about toxicology. So today, I'd like to teach you something. I would like to introduce you to something called water. I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking water, 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 water. What is this alleged water? Is it a toxin? So Paul, I know how you think. And you think like me. So I'm gonna teach it to you in the terms of the toxicologist would teach it. And how we're gonna start off is with the chemical structure. Water consists of this oxygen here, along with these two little hydrogens. This leaves it in an uncharged, yet polarized state. Side effects of this alleged water include rehydration, the feeling the need to urge to urinate approximately 30 minutes to 60 minutes after its ingestion, and also moist mucous membranes. Typically, it's not a toxin. However, in your case, this is so foreign to your body, it's probably nephrogenic. <laughs> 